Previously on Famicom Dojo. We thought we'd take a look at Nintendo's first foray into 3D gaming for the Famicom. Oh. How many games did it have? Oh, hey man, where should I put the points? Are you guys done? First, we introduced you to the Famicom 3D system, which sadly didn't have a counterpart in the U.S. So now it's finally time to move on to the first console 3D peripheral that was released in North America. I have a Vectrex. For a console people actually owned. Oh, me! Again? But you said the first 3D console released in America, so I thought... Uh, not yet. In fact, this one wasn't even released by Nintendo. Okay. Look, it's not you. It's not that Sean doesn't... It's not you. You're right, he's a jerk. You're gonna eat all of those, aren't you? Released the same year as the Famicom 3D system, the Cinescope 3D relied on the same shutter glasses technology as its Nintendo counterpart. So similar, in fact, that they both used the same stereo 3.5mm mini plug jack. Because of this, they can be used interchangeably on either system. How'd I get here? Now you don't have to splurge on a second set of Famicom 3D glasses. You know, unless you want to. But despite their similarities, there were also quite a few differences. The Famicom 3D system might look a little weird, but it worked great if you already had to wear actual glasses. No, I still feel completely silly. On the other hand, the more traditional looking Sega Scope 3D glasses were kind of tight, so it's fairly common to find used sets with cracked or missing earpieces. Or maybe they weren't meant to be worn by a grown man pushing 30? And unlike the Famicom, we didn't have jacks for two players. Well, actually, a simple stereo splitter could be used to plug a second pair of glasses in. Oh, not again. Not that it mattered, because just like the Famicom 3D system, none of the games actually supported two players. K.O. I'm going home, but, um, you got any more Sean's? You know, really thought they were going to use you today. Another big difference, unlike Nintendo, Sega produced all of the Sega Scope 3D titles, mostly converted from their popular arcade games. What's going on? I, I forgot to tell you, I don't actually have a working Sega Mark III. Fortunately, I do have a pair of glasses for the Master System. The first Sega Scope 3D game we're going to look at is Zaxxon 3D, released in North America in 1988 and one of the only titles available when the glasses were released. I love Zaxxon! It was a classic! It was originally released for arcades back in 1982. It was ported to a lot of systems over the years, but strangely not the Sega Master System. This was an interesting choice because the original Zaxxon already implied 3D with its isometric view. So what if it were actually 3D to boot? Sure it is. It was the all-new third installment of the Zaxxon series, released exclusively for the Sega Master System. 
What? Well, it looks a lot like a game called Star Strike for the Intellivision. Star Strike has moving images that make the game appear three-dimensional. Asteroids doesn't. Well, I guess it looks a little better. Similarly, Space Harrier 3D is a sequel to the original Sega arcade game Space Harrier, which was released in 1985. Welcome to the Panic Zone. Get ready. It was one of Sega's first games to use 16-bit graphics, running on arcade hardware that was the progenitor to the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. Unlike Zaxxon, the original Space Harrier arcade game was ported to the Sega Master System. Unfortunately, it looked something like this. Space Harrier 3D was released exclusively for the Master System, and it didn't look all that different from the choppy port of the original arcade game. Well, I guess it looks a little better. However, like Zaxxon 3D and most other Sega Scope 3D games, it required use of the glasses. Unless when you died and ranked in the top 7, you put in the cheat code 3 with a second player controller. Without the cheat code or the glasses, the game looks, well, pretty much like what you see here. There were other ports of arcade games like Outrun 3D, but things got more interesting later when original titles got released. Missile Defense 3D was pretty arcadey in its own right, and required their phaser as well as the Sega Scope 3D glasses to play. Between Nintendo and Sega, it was the only game to even use a secondary peripheral, despite the past the port Nintendo made available on the Famicom 3D system. Like in the arcade shooter, the gameplay consists entirely of objects flying at the screen, in this case, missiles that you need to shoot down. The 3D effect in this game is pretty convincing, by far the best I've seen between the Famicom 3D system and the Sega Score 3D. But if you let the realistic effect freak you out and too many missiles get through... <sighs> Oh, we are really bad at games. Isn't this like level one? Maybe if we had some coaching, a pro gamer could come in and go like, select button, select button, now! In a departure from shooters, Maze Hunter 3D is, what, a puzzle game? Sure, instead of shooting, you beat stuff over the head. Here the 3D effect was used to give depth to the overhead angle. The character can jump, appearing to come outward from the screen, or walk on two different vertical levels. It kind of looks like Legend of Zelda. It's nothing like The Legend of Zelda. Okay, maybe a little. Well, I guess it looks a little better. Going back to shooting stuff, Poseidon Wars 3D puts you in charge of a battleship shooting other battleships. Well, they're supposed to be battleships, but they look a lot more like a mash of gray pixels sitting on a digital horizon. By the way, Sean, A3. You suck my master of great pixels sitting on a digital horizon! You can also engage a hidden 2D mode by pushing the 1 button on the second controller. Much easier than being forced to play and die in Space Harrier 3D without glasses. Now when you shoot things, it looks like your ammunition's just getting smaller as... <sighs> Actually, you know what this does remind me of? Aren't those submarines, though? Ah, big whoop. Well, I guess it looks a little better. Speaking of resembling Nintendo titles, this feature borrowing can cut both ways. Tokudasai Daisakusen borrows a lot from Space Air, except you run along the ground, have to jump a lot, and avoid whatever those things are. That is until the end of the level. Finally, I got to the shooting bit. 
You don't see a problem with this? Shh, quiet, you're gonna kill me. Da. As bad as that is, Attack Animal Gakuen is an even worse offender. Uh oh, I think I can sort of see up her skirt. What are you guys doing? Uh, uh, yoga? However, when you get to the racing games, Rad Racer was completely... Oh, come on! Outrun 3D was yet another Sega arcade game, given the 3D treatment, which, like many of the others, came from the legendary Yu Suzuki studio AM2. Alright, but look, it makes sense that Nintendo and the third parties would decide to make racing and shooting titles for the Famicom 3D system, because both genres of games require some kind of implied third dimensionality in order for the concept to work. But... Y yeah, that's really shameless. Zaxxon 3D bears a lot of resemblance to Konami's Falcian, but clearly Falcian is superior graphically, and unlike Zaxxon, you can play it in 2D mode. Actually, Zaxxon does have a hidden 2D mode. While on the title screen, push the pause button on the console to access a menu to switch to 2D or invert your aiming. And have at it. But in stark contrast to Nintendo, all eight of the Sega Scope 3D games were made in-house by Sega, not that that ensured them any greater success. And that's it! After the release of Line of Fire in 1991, 3D gaming was dead and buried forever. Until the release of the Virtual Boy. <sighs> Fine, we'll review the Virtual Boy. Hey! In part three of our 3D special. Special thanks to Zeus for lending us some of the Famicom 3D system games that we reviewed in the show. We might have a FamicomWorld.com for us, but if you want to check out his stuff for yourself, head over to AtariUSA.com. Also be sure to subscribe to our new Famicom Dojo podcast where you can hear Vink and me talk about video games every week. Famicom Dojo. Jikai. Whatever, dude. Whatever. Famicom Dojo. Can I just randomly be wearing a sombrero? <laughs>